Good morning to you on this Tuesday morning. We continue with Philippians chapter 1 today, reading from verse 15. Some, to be sure, are preaching Christ even from envy and strife, but some also from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, rather than from pure motives, thinking to cause me distress and my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in this I rejoice. Yes, and I will rejoice. Paul says something very, very important here. He's reminding us of the fact that it's not the preacher, it's not the one who is proclaiming the gospel that's important. It's the message. The power is in the word. The power is not in the speaker. It doesn't matter if it's me or somebody else who proclaims the gospel to you. The power is in the gospel. God said about his word, My word which goes forth from my mouth shall not return to me empty, but it shall achieve the purposes for which I sent it. Martin Luther once said quite quaintly, he said, even if a donkey preaches the gospel, it's still the gospel. You see, the messenger isn't as important as the message. And some people get that wrong from time to time. Sometimes people focus more on the speaker, more on the messenger than on the message itself. And Paul is reminding us that for whatever motive, that some people preach the gospel for the wrong motives. Some people do it out of love with the right motive. But whatever the motive is, the gospel is the gospel. And the gospel is very simple. For God so loved the world, God so loved you, that he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. The power is in the words of the gospel. The power is the word of God. The Holy Spirit works in, with, through and under the word of God. So it's not the preacher, it's not the proclaimer, it's the Holy Spirit working in conjunction with God's word. So the gospel is the gospel. And so Paul says, I rejoice in whatever way the gospel is preached. The more it is preached, the better, whatever way. If you want to get a sky rider and write, write the gospel up in the heavens, that's fine. That's a valid way of proclaiming the gospel. As long as the word gets out there, remember God's word when it goes out doesn't return empty. It achieves the purposes for which God sent it. Of course, the best result is if you have a person who has the right motives and is preaching out of love, it's going to reach people uh, more effectively. But the power of the gospel is in the gospel. So Paul says, no matter what way, what then only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in this I rejoice. So we rejoice whichever way, as long as Christ is proclaimed in truth, then we are happy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. We thank you for the gospel. We thank you for the good news. We thank you, Lord, that you so loved us, that you came into the world. Very soon we're going to celebrate Christmas. We're going to celebrate the fact that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Lord, thank you for coming into this world. Thank you for becoming one of us so that you could die on the cross, bearing our sin. Thank you, Lord, that you paid our sin debt in full, so that anyone who believes on you, anyone who calls upon your name, will be saved. We thank you so much. Lord, we just pray that you would help us to always be good witnesses to this truth, to be good witnesses to the gospel, to proclaim your word in truth. We thank you for the gospel. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who empowers this word. We thank you that your word never returns to you empty, but always achieves the purposes for which you sent it. We ask your blessing over this day, and we ask, Lord, that you would bless our governments, the country in which we live in. We pray, Lord, that you would help them to be honest and faithful and true in what they do. We lift up before you our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine that are suffering in this horrible war. We pray for an end to this war. We pray, Lord, that uh, you would defeat the enemy and the enemy would go home broken and defeated. We pray for the surrounding countries that also live in fear, Lord, that you would just protect them. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love each one of us so very much and we pray for the lost. We pray for those who don't know you yet, who have not yet responded to the gospel. We pray that today would be the day that call upon the name of Jesus and are saved. Would you turn their hearts to you, Lord? We ask, we pray, Lord, for our loved ones. We pray for the sick, the dying, and all who are in need. I pray for every listener. You know exactly what their needs are today. You know exactly what's going to happen to them today. So I pray that you would continue, Lord, to just empower them, 
with your presence and that they would know how much you love each one of us. Thank you for your tremendous love. Thank you for your amazing grace and mercy. Lord, we lift up everybody before you that has any need whatsoever, knowing that you provide for all of our needs and your hand is never shortened. Thank you. So, Father, now we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. So, my friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you all again tomorrow.